the research was an incredible factor in the success of MASH, I feel. Um, it began almost immediately where uh, Gene had heard of a doctor at UCLA who it was felt was somewhat um, involved in as the image for uh, Hawkeye in that he had been in Korea and he knew Hooker Hornberger who wrote the novel and um, so uh, we went and, and interviewed him. We went to his office after his day's work, our day's work, and sat with a tape recorder and just listened to him tell stories. And we did this with two or three doctors right here in the Los Angeles area. When you say we, you're, you're, you mean Gene Reynolds and you? Gene Reynolds and Larry and myself. All Usually we, all, we would all go, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so this was after it was picked up? He, 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 yeah, I, as a, I think it could have even been in anticipation of it being picked up. I, I can't, because I, I, knowing Gene, Gene, Gene had a really uh, passion for this kind of research and exploring this whole vein of information. And, and uh, he, he was very, very um, focused on wanting to do with that. And I, as I recall, he was so focused that uh, he wasn't going to wait for the pickup. There was so much of it that was so interesting that he wanted to get a, get a was head it, start. Was it free form, these interviews? Or did you uh, come with a list of questions? Um, in the beginning, it was pretty much free form. After a while, OK, we would we would have a few questions, but not a lot. Usually, it, it, it was a, a free form. And um, you just would listen to them talk and tell about their experiences and ask them about stuff that um, related from a medical standpoint and from a military standpoint and how, how the two as separate entities and certainly the two as they become entwined. Um, and it, it was just remarkably fruitful. And, and uh, um, as you were saying uh, with the work we're doing here now, um, the, we, would, we never taped it, but we would record it on a tape recording on the phone, a gizmo, a little thing on the telephone, just to have an audio recording. And then we would give, maybe there, by the end of the evening there would be a few hours worth, we would give that to a secretary who would transcribe it into a manuscript form. And you'd have these thick manuscripts which you could go through and underline, 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 and there would be stuff in there that would be just so valuable that you could uh, begin to really use pieces of that for, for, if not for whole shows, certainly for, as MASH often did, to have two or three stories going at once. And um, there was an extraordinary amount of that stuff. It was uh, incredibly valuable all, over all those years. And and Gene did it, um, you know, throughout his five years with the show. And then I continued it right up till the very end. In fact, between us, we interviewed hundreds of doctors. He had started it, and, and then I continued. And um, it got to the point in my later years, now we're talking about year 10 or 11, because every time we talked to a doctor, we would say, there's one thing you can do for us. Give us the name of somebody you served with. Is there another name? Do you know uh, where he lives? Just give her the name and the town. We'll do the rest of it. And so over the years, there began, came this whole network uh, of doctors that we spoke to all over the country. And, uh, but, but as I said, towards the end of, of the show and the end of my tenure of doing it, um, doctors would say, I have a great story for you. And they would tell you of an incident. I'd say, oh yeah, well, we did that in season three, or we did a whole piece about that in season six. And so it began to lose its uniqueness because we were beginning to hear the same stories over and over. Um, but and then another interesting part of this is that uh, when I was doing it, uh, as I say, we got into a regular system where you would call a doctor based on a name that you got from a doctor you'd already interviewed. And the conversation with his nurse or assistant or receptionist, whoever answers the phone. Uh, I'm calling from MASH, I'm Bert Metcalf, the producer, etc. Uh, Dr. So-and-so, who lives in Schenectady, New York, mentioned to us that he had served with your doctor uh, in Korea. Do you suppose it would be possible for us to just spend a little time with him uh, and, and get 
some information regarding his experiences. Oh, well, they would say, I, I don't know, Dr. Sonzo is a, a very busy man, and I don't know that he can give you this, and uh, uh, I wouldn't count on it, and it's all kind of negative and, and detached as, as is part of their function. You know, that's, that's their job, to, to, so he can do his, his work. Uh, but so I would always leave it at this. Just tell him. It's funny because I can get um, emotional even as I tell you this. Just tell him that we have talked to so-and-so and so-and-so -so said that we should get in touch with your doctor and that he would enjoy speaking to us. Almost always. And that's how I would leave it. And, and she'd say, okay, I'll get back to you later in the week, whatever. She would call back and say, yes, okay, Dr. So-and-so will talk to you. And he'll give you an hour on Thursday night, or he'll give you um, a short time on Saturday afternoon if you call his home, whatever. We would get into all these little ground rules. But we never got turned down, as I recall. Almost every time we did this, um, the doctor would say, okay. Then the point that I'm getting at is that when we would ultimately talk to him, all that business about, oh, we can only give you 20 minutes or an hour or a half hour, whatever, completely out the window. These guys would talk and talk and talk because it was cathartic. Just like it's cathartic for me now to be telling it to you, it was the most wonderful experience to hear these guys tell you these stories of first-hand knowledge that I don't care how brilliant Larry Gelbart is or how brilliant any other writers we would have, you cannot sit in a room and stare at the ceiling and conceive these kinds of events compared to people who, who live through it. And even to this day, shows that can derive the benefit it happens mostly in our shows, it's like cop shows or, or legal or medical, uh, who have the benefit of um, technical advisors or people who live through a lot of this, who, who serve on the show and who begin writing for the shows and who become a source of incredibly valuable uh, material um, on the subject of, of what they're doing, uh, th that it's just so much more relevant than I mean, family sitcoms can be nice and sweet, but uh, they, they, there's just no comparison in terms of, of the real substance you can get at and the solidity that you gain from, from this kind of source. Do, do you think that talking to those doctors drove you to make it an even better show? Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. You just you didn't want to let them down. And, and they were enormously complimentary. And not only on the phone, but many of them over the years came to see us. You know, you'd get a call from a doctor who you interviewed four years ago, and he'd say, I'm coming through L.A., I'm going to be there. Do you suppose I could come? And, oh, well, of course, it would be our, our pleasure. You know, definitely come and, and um, you know, we'd really when they saw uh, try the set, to honor did them. They, uh, did, they, did it remind them of? Yes, uh, many of them, particularly the exterior, the location, would say, I cannot believe. Now, this is interesting because ultimately I went to Korea. Gene and Larry had on, on an earlier trip as well, but I went to Korea in 1980, 81, I think. And I saw what the doctors who we had spoken to on the phone when they came to the MASH exterior in Malibu, when they would say, I'm astonished. I cannot believe that this is all here. This is exactly the way it was. This is exactly as I, how I remember it. Now, of course, this was not only great art direction, but it was very, very fortunate in the sense that the natural topography, the mountains and the brush, and a lot of it was very, very similar, as I only got to realize when I went there myself. And then I understood, my God, it is uncanny how so much of where these military bases were out in the middle of nowhere in the um, Korean countryside uh, were... Uh, exactly what we had duplicated um, at the MASH location in Malibu. Uh, 